So we got the uh, the shadow minister for renewables, renewables and energy, <laughs> and, and it's pretty appropriate bloke to have in my car at the moment because this is an electric car. Yeah, you just yeah, oh, that's, no, right. Yeah, no, that's right. What we'll do is we might go up go up the North Stewart Highway because we can um, um, get a bit of a feel for the car, if you know what I mean. A bit like we did last. Time. Oh, would you want to go down the South South Highway where we've got a bit of bit of space to stretch its legs? I don't know. What do you reckon? We're going west at the moment, so either way. Well, we'll head south then if you've already been north. Yeah, I think, and, you have, and you've been on the north track too, so we might have to do a, a bit of a yui here somewhere, but we'll get around there. So we're in the middle of Alice Springs at the moment. Um, Josh has actually been in this car before, so he kind of knows what to expect, but what I wanted to show him this time was a bit more about the, the auto features and stuff like that. And also have a chat to Clive in the back here, because Clive's from um, Tasmania and as we mentioned before and um, he's actually been major part of putting all the electric stations or pretty well all the electric stations in Tasmania making it the full um, almost the whole state now covered in electric charging stations and fully renewable fast, fast right? chargers, fast chargers uh, in this case. Yeah well we, we're mostly on uh, we're 100% renewable because anyway, anyway um, yeah. being, being mainly um, hydro, hydro. hydro wind and yep. And um, so it was a good opportunity to meet you because he's already worked with the Tasmanian government um, on the similar projects. Um, and it wasn't only just under ABA, was it? It was, um, you have a business uh, interest yeah, so, as well. So, okay, I have a couple of hats. One is I'm um, National Vice President of the Australian Electric Vehicle Association. So uh, that's given me some status in talking to government. <laughs> um, and there's been a very good consultative committee or working group that was established two or three years ago. Um, we had some sort of informal groups before that that just looked at what the planning for a uh, fast charge infrastructure would look like. We started back in uh, 2016 in fact. Um, but, uh, so it's been a five year road. But the um, state government's been very supportive in providing funding for, for the fast charge network. Roughly two dollars of private money for every dollar that the state's put in. Yep. Um, and uh, the arena has now started to put some money in nationally, uh, but some into Tassie as well. Um, and some of those announcements will be out in the next week or so. Um, but um, yeah, we've, we do have a, a, a mission as Electric Highway Tasmania, which is a, a business which I established with some other investors, to make sure that you can get anywhere in the state an electric car with a fast charger conveniently. And we've just about done that. There's just one little corner that we need to uh, pick up. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty well. Job's but, done. Um, yeah. uh, we'll do that in the next 18 months. But, I mean, it's uh, kind of kind of handy that you got the smallest state in Australia, but well, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it gives you fair, that edge, doesn't it? To be fair, the <laughs> it, ACT it, did beat us. Yeah, true, but true. They're but they're, they're a territory, yeah. just like us, Josh, yeah, yeah, just yeah, like us. So but, we could um, we could be at least the second territory that yeah, we, did, we, we had an easier job in some ways, but it's still challenging in some of our far distant western things where there's not a lot of infrastructure and yeah. you know even getting cell phone coverage and stuff like yeah yeah hello and, and we've so, got that problem uh, out here yeah. so what we'll do now this is a really good road for it josh just um what you can do is double tap on that right stick there and that's going to put you into autopilot down down double tap down so the tap tap that's it so you hear that ding dong now what you did there is you, you push this a little bit too far and it went back to manual so just double tap again double tap yeah, let yeah. The just let the steering wheel take over that's it now what I do is I just keep one hand just like you're cruising along at 100 k's in one hand this guy's going to be interesting but that's no, right he's going to see it there no it's good what I'm going to do just going to change lanes into the slow lane and we'll just give it a bit of a jiggle and it'll do that in itself oh you pulled it back <laughs> you got a bit tricky there you have to double click again oh no it's actually I did it itself sorry that's interesting there you go now it's going to go across so it's changing lanes by itself it's a very weird feeling, I can tell you. I know, and, and, and don't get me wrong, it will take a bit. Now, it's gone to the 80 zone, so we've actually got to flick that up a bit. Yeah, let's go. And what you're going to do is just going to keep a little bit of weight on that wheel. So you're ready to take over at any time, right? Yeah. So just a little bit of weight on it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It, it can tell whether you're it can tell when you're holding it. So you can take a little bit of weight, but a little bit too much will break out because it wants to let you take over if you want to. Okay. okay. But it's now um, picking up traffic lights it's picking up the lanes it's picking up the dotted lines um, and it's picked that it's 80 k's so it'll actually read the 80 k sign you'll see the signs come up um, it, it is genuinely ready to be full self-driving intuitive car. yep intuitive driving it's a it's actually ADAS is the with the letters for it. it's a, a 
adaptive driver assist system or something like that. Yeah. Um, I hope I got that right. Did something, I? Like something like that. ADAS. It's another a AFA. It's another acronym. Um, now, interesting enough, no, just, just let it go. If you, if you can hold yourself to it, feel it starting to slow down because it sees a car in front of us at the moment. There's the car there. You can set that spacing. So yeah. If you want it to back off earlier, you If you feel that's too close, we can. Oh, yeah, I think it's so, so you take over whenever you feel it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because I've had the. Um the sensor in cruise control before where the car yep. will actually slow down or speed yep. up so I'm used to that yeah and that's all this is that's yeah, all that's, that's doing. Right. but exactly. this is also keeping yeah. your lanes as well yeah. so it's not quite smart enough to get through like a roundabout like this so you've taken over and that's great what would happen if you uh, if you didn't take it'll over when you went yell to and down. scream at you and actually <laughs> give up and, and tell you to it'll take say over you need to drive. but that's today tomorrow could be quite different because it can update the software and actually get better all right and that's what our mate Mr. Musk is doing at the moment. He's, he's madly making what they call the full self-driving suite sorted out. And uh, there is word that it might even be happening in the next few days. But again, it's a legislation thing as well. We want to make sure it's a safe way to, to improve driver safety. So what we'll do is we'll do the double click again, because this is a good bit of road to do it. All right. Now again, just keep one hand on the wheel and just, just, just leave your weight of your hand on the wheel and it shouldn't, shouldn't nag us too much now. So it sees this car drifting off to the left. It sees the cars coming towards us sometimes. It sees the arrows on the road. Right. Now, when you're on a long drive, this is where this really becomes a time because now you're not necessarily concentrating on keeping in the middle of the road. Now you're concentrating on the kangaroos, the cars, everything else that's far away and getting ready to take over if you need to. Mm. It's got, now this will be interesting. It's a bit of a, no, no, it's a nice and smooth, that one. My one gets a bit jarry. I'm just going to wriggle that a bit. So you can feel it coming around the corner there. It's um, it's quite safe. I mean, you you will get used to it yeah. very quickly. I'd come. Um, it is very disconcerting because you naturally go to turn. Yep. And and, it's, and it's, right it's, before you think, oh, it's not going it, to turn. It does. It does. Yeah. So, so it, it you kind of just get rid of. You, you get used to it because it keeps in the center of the lane. So it's not right. it's not looking to go for the apex yet, but it probably will be trained to do pretty shortly. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to scoot up to 70 here. So I'm just going to feel that pick up now. Yep. And it'll take us just to 70. I'm just going to give that a wriggle because it, it. So my foot's off the accelerator yep. at the moment. Yes, so my foot's off the accelerator. I did and notice if you, before I could I could feather the accelerator. Absolutely. And it would actually adjust the, the speed. And just like cruise control, if you tap yeah. your brake, you've got full control back. Right? So it, it's it's very intuitive like that. It's just a little bit more than what you used to, you know. <laughs> so as you see the 70 sign come up, if you watch the screen here just real quick, see the 70 sign. So it's actually Season. reading the signs yeah. and usually it's not perfect yet but usually it will adjust to that speed too so you don't get any um i always wonder so when i'm driving in a city quite often you know there's a lot going on around yeah. you you might miss the last speed sign yeah are you able like, uh, it, well it's telling you it right just there. tells you right now it, it's it? telling you the live the, the last red speed sign okay. is right there so that's the and that's the speed. cruise control that you're set for okay. set for 70 max Right now, this is interesting. Yeah, it got a little bit wavy there because it saw the road wide, so it was trying to keep in the middle, but then all of a sudden it saw the lines. Saw so. The lines. so yeah, so we're actually heading south of Alice Springs at the moment, yeah, probably down to the airport if anyone knows where that is. But if, if the idea is, and, and I don't know if you've been in, have you been in uh, Wheelie's car? The, the, well, I haven't the private been in the new, the so new he's, less, uh, Yeah, well, it's not the new new one, but it's you know, he does the private high one, so he does a lot of tra traffic to the doctors and all that to the airport. And he uses autopilot all the way down here, or every time. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah, and then that way, I guess autopilot at the moment, it's something like, you know, if you were driving and you said, Hunter, hey, can you just grab the wheel? That's what autopilot is. You know, <laughs> someone in the passenger seat, they can grab the wheel while you do something. And that's probably the best thing to use it for in, in an urban state. Just let it let it do its thing. Yep. Trust so he's gonna, he's gonna wanna turn, which is interesting. This is a new bit of road here too, so it's... Yep, and then he's going to turn off here, and the There's car, someone, the car will, in front of us has just up. pulled off to the side. Yeah, car yeah. slowed down, and now away we go, which yeah. is good. And so it'll take I you straight back up to the speed limit, so it won't didn't, go over. Didn't touch a thing there. That was... Yeah, it, it got it all. It got it all sorted out. Now, what I'm really interested in, especially with yeah. the charging stations in the Northern Territory, I always think we're a bit blessed. <laughs> we have one major highway right up the middle of our true, territory. True, true. We've got a couple of offshoots as well. To few, worry about. few offshoots, but realistically, for me, yeah. it's, it's all about being able to travel from Alice Springs to Darwin. To Darwin. Yep, yep. So at the moment, um, Australian Electric Vehicle Association and TOCA, which is the Tesla Owners Club of Australia, um, 
over the last five years, we've been helping the, the road houses to um, get at least what they call 22 kilowatt three phase charging. Okay. Um, and that may, allows guys like me in, in the longer range cars, but medium to long range, yeah, medium. To, to charge, um, to, we can travel at 100 kilometers an hour and we can charge at 100 kilometers an hour, roughly, all right? The smaller medium cars might have to charge a little bit slower. Yeah. Um, but in my in my big car especially, I can get to Adelaide in two days, for instance, or I can get to Darwin in two days with that current network. But that current charge network is just as um, slower charging as it is the speed you have to go at. So, yeah. so unfortunately, if you went at 120, 130, your charging rate is still only going to be 100, so you t spend more time charging than you do driving. Okay. Yeah. What we do need to improve though, you're absolutely right, is we need to now take that to the next step. We've done that on a, on a nickel and dime budget, uh, working with the roadhouses, supplying really basic, the old uh, three phase power points that Australia uses. It's just uh, reminding, it just wants to remind you that you're alive and you haven't fallen asleep. Now if you, just actually, we'll just diverse for a sec. If you did fall asleep right now, in a normal car, in a normal car, what would you do? What would happen if you just fell asleep right now? Yeah, you'd drift you'd off. drift right off and probably hit one of those two trees there, all right? Well, in this car, if you drifted off and you're in autopilot, it would actually beep, 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 just like you heard then. It would start flashing the screen. It would then put the hazard lights on, so it thinks it's in a 60 zone for some reason. I think it's just because we've passed a roadworks. So. Uh, it was the roadworks on with 60, so it reads roadworks on as well. So it would then flash its hazard lights and slow down to a stop. It would stop in the middle of the road initially. It's not going to pull off. Let's see if it. But it would not kill you. Let's all right? see if it recognises the end road work here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah we'll. Easy. Uh, there you go. There's the hundred. And as soon as it passes it, boom, there we go. Back up to hundred. Well, you didn't even see it at first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll just give that another wriggle again. So um, we might go down. Do you want to go down the Stuart Highway? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. So. So this one you're going to have to manually take over, and that's fine. Yeah, it's starting to speed up. We'll put your indicator on, but just wait till you get up there, of course. Now, see how it really pulls back. Yeah, so yeah. we'll pull back to a stop on all on regen braking. All right. I find that interesting because yeah, I'm used to electric. Pull, pull it now. Yeah. Electric um, vehicles not having any engine braking, yeah. but effectively this has a huge amount of. And, all, and all, everything all, is going back into the battery. When you virtually do. all new EVs have full. Uh, yeah. Yours is particularly good at it. Yeah, so. yeah. Mine's um, quite aggressive. This is. This, this car, when I had bought this car, didn't have that. It was a software update. <laughs> Here we can see the fuel out of it. So there's 100. So that was uh, just slightly before the 100 sign came up, we, we got to 100. Um, but I, I dare say we want to actually pull up here in a second and, and give it a real good, good <laughs> harrowing. Since we're actually in front of almost the, the best sporting arena, car sporting arena, being the the, think, the start line, think of the think think desert works. race, and Cantra's uh, drag race. We could also just go down the drag strip if you want to have a really good look. I don't think they're open. Uh, there's always a back door. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we'll just, you know, just well, one, but Chris, if the gate's open, it's, it's, it's you know, go you for a look. We'll make, we're just, no, we're just gonna go for an have a look. Um, but yeah, it's actually, well, we'll tell you what you want to do. Yeah, you want to, at the gate, you want to pull up and stop any, either way. Yep. Because um, this little train hill is uh, definitely worth a, uh, a look up and over as long as there's not a. Uh, let's see if this gate's open. Which it, it is. It is. <laughs> no, we're just going to have a sneak in the in Cadra. I'm sure Cadra won't mind us borrowing their track for a second. Now, I know they put chains across the um, start finish line, but. Uh, it's kind of a long way in. Yeah. There you go. Building the new. Oh, uh, that's right. They're doing a bit of work here. We might be a bit sneaky if we get in there, but um, if there's guys here, we, we might be pushing our luck a bit. I just go and ask them, don't so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See if there's anyone on. So is this? Are we all about Tesla's or are we all about yeah, all no, electric vehicles? All, I'm, all I'm really interested vehicles, in, in Rivian. So Rivian yeah. is something that oh, I've been following really closely. Good. Right, but have you been following the Lightning, the F-150? You've seen the F-150? So I saw the F-150, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I guess it, I feel as if 
Ford have, have all of a sudden realised this is the direction yeah. a lot of people I, are going I, in. I, I think everybody has. I think they all have the, just turned a corner. There's nobody now that has mm. uh, and, and At least got something on the market. And have Ford grabbed a lot of their stuff from Rivian well, to I develop would, their vehicle? Uh, they, 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 they haven't they admitted it. They had a joint thing. But they did have a joint thing. Well, it still is. Yeah, um, and I remember that being announced a while ago. Yeah, okay. So this is, uh, we're pulled up uh, at the Cadra track here and uh, yeah. there's a few people here, but we... Uh, Right, right no. around the other way. Ah, yeah. Six or one. It might be, uh, might be a bit hard to get in there, really. No. <laughs> we'll sneak in and um, sneak in if anyone. Ah, uh, yeah. This is going to be the new um, tower. Yeah. Um, you, you may or may not notice, but there is actually a uh, <clears throat> three 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 pace plug right there. there see is, that? I see that. And it just. So it happens to handy when I'm doing drag racing They're here. They're all over just, the place when you look around. When you look around, yeah, yeah. They do a lot of camping here, so it's obviously uh, what is there for. Okay. Uh, I'll change the around. So that's pretty good for um, just go and sneak up on there the line. And, uh, <laughs> it's only cameras. <laughs> yeah, you would be right. So we're, um, we're in lane one. We're in lane one of um, Cadra. Um, we thought we might just uh, come down and just do a quick test run, shall we, Josh? <laughs> so we'll just go up to the line. Oh, this is no, the line here. Electoral, electoral opportunity. Yeah, look, you know, and it's 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 legal. We're, we're on a racetrack. We're we're legally on a racetrack. We probably don't really have permission, but that's okay. That's it's clear. There's no one. Certainly no one ahead of us. So in about um, three seconds, you're going to put it to the floor. Well, I'm prepared at least this time. Yeah, this I time you know what's going to happen. happen. So uh, when you're ready, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All the way. End of the strip here. That's it then. <laughs> Just let the, let the braking take it. So we're actually fully regening most of that energy that we just took. Probably about 60 to 70 <laughs> percent. And you know, uh, not, not a, a single bit of CO2 was produced. <laughs> Except for out of our lungs, of course. So if you go up and up there, uh, go up and go up and that That was funny. I'm sure the boys there so would have a bit of a laugh. You asked the question: Is it about Teslas or is it about EVs? I would say it's about energy. Energy, yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's that's something that I am very interested. And, in. and and I think we we've just talked a bit about the, uh, the the highway from Darwin to Alice, and no question that's a priority. But I think the other priority is your remote communities. Yeah. Um, so just switching from Teslas, but yeah, yeah, but cool about Teslas. Um, my Nissan Leaf uh, is a Japanese manufacturer. Um, Japan has a regulation that says all electric cars have to be capable of two-way charging. So they can give so it. They come as from well as the taken. factory ready to discharge as well as charge the batteries. Yeah. We don't yet have approval for the little box on the wall for our grid connection for Australia, but that's underway for three or four different models of two-way charging. The, the, the acronym for that is bi-directional charging now. Um, and uh, what it means is a car like mine, which has got a normally 62 kilowatt hour battery, equivalent to about four Tesla power walls. A Tesla power wall, about $15,000 if you install. don't get grants and whatever yeah. installed. So I paid $49,000 for a car, which is $60,000 worth of Tesla power wall on wheels. So you're getting your electricity storage, your energy storage, and you transport in one package very economically. If you put that into remote communities with solar, they charge all day because most cars are parked 96% of the time. Not yep. always at home, admittedly, but uh, a whole lot of the time. And if you use a community shared network with everybody who's parked at home, providing that storage for uh, mobile use, you would need if any, a very minimal amount of fixed battery storage that stays, yeah. stays in the community because most of the time you'll have some capacity in your electric vehicle. And, car's going to be and if you size the panels right, they should be able to meet the community's electricity needs and transport needs from the same panels, all seamlessly integrated. But I think what where my greatest interest is, is when is that electricity going to be generated? Because obviously we know that electric cars, you know, if we were to put one of these in everyone's house right now, yeah. it would just about triple the consumption of every household. Mm. If they went home and they purely charged off, no, off their electricity grid, you know what I mean? Nobody does. Having, <laughs> having, okay. having, owned, having owned an electric vehicle for seven yeah. years, yeah. okay, so I've been at it for a while, 
most people don't do that. <laughs> the first thing... They didn't even hear us come through. <laughs> the first thing is that that 90% uh, of people who've got electric vehicles have already got solar on their roof. Absolutely. So their, yeah, their yeah. preference is to plug in during the daytime if the vehicles are home. Yeah. So they because they're getting the cheapest electricity they're going to get. It's free, basically. Basically, yeah. Or whatever they're going to get putting in the grid. Yeah. The second thing is if you don't or can't get enough solar, or your car's not home because you're working somewhere else and your car's not in the driveway, then the next best thing is to have off peak and you drill and you do it at night. Yeah. The worst thing is if you've got flat rate electricity tariffs and you don't care and you don't have solar, then you charge when you come home. But yeah. that's yeah. the minority. Probably, yeah. you know, five or ten percent. So while your concern is legitimate at one level, the reality is not as severe as that. And the second thing is it's actually very easy to manage. Yeah. Um, every Virtually every car, and there's a few variations on the different brands, but virtually every car has a built-in timer which controls the charging and when it occurs. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that although uh, it takes a lot of energy to fill a battery, the reality is you don't do that very often. You're just topping, you're topping, up. Up. topping up. So yeah. I drive, the average car in, in Tasmania, I don't know the Northern Territory stats, but yeah. in Tassie, the average Similar. kilometers. Oh, up to you. We, we got, probably might head back to town. That's right. Um, but the, the Australian average and the Tasmanian it. average are pretty similar, and it's about 42 kilometers a day. Yep. Now, and 42, how many kilowatts would that choose through? Uh, kilowatt hours? Um, about five. Five, okay. So, so uh, let's have a look here. Uh, it depends on the car. So, five, to, five to eight. Yeah. Five we've to we've eight. been giving this car kind of a bit of a hard time, right? And it's pulling 150 watt hours per kilometer. So that's point one of a kilowatt per kilometer. Well, uh, six six kilometers per kilowatt six hour. Six kilometers per kilowatt hour, yeah. So if you yeah. took the 42, that's seven kilowatt hours a day. If you, if you, if if you average 42 k, seven kilowatts. Now, and, seven and kilowatts that's, on that's top of that. Yeah, <laughs> and that's, that's a lead foot, yeah. Not yeah, at all. If, if you're driving conservatively, you don't use that much. Yeah, and, and so that's our average. Yep, yeah, okay, there's always going to be, you know, um, the Billy guys, like he said, I want to go a thousand k's in a day, and I, I, I've got a bladder as big as my leg, you know, because they never stop to go for a leg. But ship ship. even those guys are rare because 95% of the time they're just driving to and from work, right? Yeah, and, and I've and driven even, my, my shorter range leaf, the one before the one I've got now, hmm. um, uh, from Melbourne to Sydney in a day. Wow. With fast charging, it's it's not hard. No. You stop for morning, uh, a cup of coffee in the morning, uh, take a pee. I have to, and then, um, <laughs> you can edit that. Um, yeah. and then, um, no. uh, you know, you, you charge for twenty minutes, and you've got an extra hundred kilometers or more of range. Yeah. You stop for lunch, maybe for half an hour, forty minutes, if you, you know, take yeah. it easy. Yeah. Uh, you can have a couple hundred kilometers of range. Afternoon tea break, same thing. So I um, think you need to really get up to a hundred here, mate. Let's go. You don't know what's already. Oh. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, maybe we got to put it into autopilot. Uh, just go one more. Uh, no, no, it's, it. yeah, it's still not blue here, so we'll just double tap that again. There you go. Now you got your light so come up. It's blue. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think the the issue of electricity supply. I mean, yes, you may need some more capacity. Yep. I'm not sure what your average uh, household consumption is in the Northern Territory. You've got air conditioning on obviously in the summer. Yeah, it's a little uh, bit higher than average. It's probably 25 to 30 a day. Kilowatt hours a day. Yeah. Which is oh, interesting because my my household, I, I average 10, but that's because I have solar, yes, we have yep. LED lighting, yep. and we have split systems that we only use if yep. we're in the room. So yep. 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 Sure. fantastic. Yeah. So so that's right. So, so but if you look at it, yeah, territory average or whatever you'll probably find the electric cars and, and the other thing is uh, what's your total power consumption uh, to industry as opposed to domestic that's a very very good question no, I'm not too sure what it is in Northern Territory in industry to the yeah, um, but uh, uh, typically the um, consumption well I know the Tasmanian numbers but they're probably not relevant but the, the, the point I guess well, I make is the increase in electricity required to electrify your entire fleet which won't happen within 10 years because it just Cars will be around that long before they, you know, check yeah. right in. But if you if you electrified your entire fleet, you're typically looking at an increase of somewhere between seven and twenty percent max of your total electricity production. Okay. Because the electricity use is, is far more efficient than petrol use. So if you look at the gross energy, the megajoule, uh, you know, of energy consumed by fuels, that's far higher than the kilowatt hour equivalent that you consume in electricity because. The electric transport's more efficient. 
So yeah. here's the question that everyone wants to know. How do we incentivize or how do we encourage people to make the switch? Yeah. Okay, so there's, we've always said there are five factors. Uh, the first one is awareness. So just like you're in this car today, you're getting to know what it's like. Yep. You're getting a feeling for it. You're getting a sense that, oh yeah, okay, I can live with that. Indeed, you might even enjoy it. Um, <laughs> okay. So that's number one is awareness. Number two is um, adequate infrastructure. So you need, most of your charging happens at home. Yeah. May happen at work, may happen at a destination somewhere you're visiting for an hour or two and you're plugged in. But the vast majority, 80 to 90 percent, will occur in your driveway or garage or carport, whatever. Um, and, and the fast charging that you need to get around to go from here to Darwin and so forth is really a small part of your total electricity use. But if you can't do it, you kind of say, well, hang on, I want a car that can do that. So that is a barrier and it needs to be addressed even though it's a small part of the total energy use. Mm -hmm. So that's number two, um, so adequate infrastructure. Number three is choice of models. At the moment, because there has been very little support for electric vehicles in, in terms Australia. of infrastructure, in terms of everything, even just in terms of you know, the, the sense of government support, the, 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 the comments we got from some of our federal members about it stealing your weekend and all that stuff, doesn't help a manufacturer say, hey, Australia's a priority market, right? It puts them off, and we're, it did. We're already a right-hand drive market. Right? Yeah. Now, luckily, Japan's right-hand drive too, but and not all these things are coming from the UK. Yeah. So but most point, of this stuff's getting produced in China. So right? the, the point at the moment is we have had very few models brought to Australia compared to what's available internationally. Something like 35 versus several hundred yeah. overseas. So adequate range of models. They're coming. You mentioned Rivian already, the, the Ford Lightning and others that are coming. There's certainly a whole range of SUVs and pickups and stuff on their way. So that ad adequate uh, choice of models. The next one is um, price comparability. And mm -hmm. that really comes in two flavors. One is, uh, what's the whole of life cost? And it's arguable that for many uses and for certain models, that's probably pretty well here. So that although you pay more to purchase the car, the operating cost is lower. Uh, less energy for the uh, driving, but an awful lot less maintenance as well. Yeah, a lot less servicing. Yeah, yeah. so, so cool. the whole of life cost is pretty close to there. And for fleets, that's the number they should be looking at. Uh, because by and large, raising the finance isn't an issue for them so much. It's, uh, it's the total, total cost of ownership. Um, so we expect that fleets should be early adopters relative to domestic. So Especially that's good. government fleets. And, and, and government it's... fleets can do that, and they can do that cost effectively. They need to introduce one or two vehicles into different use cases. And then that, that brings on a second hand market. And, and, exactly and, right. And, and it makes their users familiar. That's one of the hurdles. 70% um, of Australians always buy second hand vehicles. All right. So we need that. We need that second hand market. That second hand market. We need that flood of electric vehicles to give them a choice. So, so, um, so fleets should be starting to ch change over already, and a lot of them are. Um, and then the next aspect of price comparability is the sticker price, the, the brand new car off the lot price or the used car off the lot price, and that's expected to be um, comparable between EVs and conventional cars around 2025. Um, now, maybe a little later in Australia because we don't have the competitive market yet, but I think we'll actually catch up pretty quickly when it starts to move. Um, and, and really, that's, uh, you know, if you get all those things done, then you'll see the switch will happen very, very, very fast. Very quickly. Mm. And, 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 and we see overseas in markets where you, you tick off each of those factors that the rate of change is really dramatic and that the sales of EVs more than double each year. Yeah. Um, and, you don't need an awful lot of incentives to do that. What you really need is um, some symbolic, I think there's a, a, a lot of merit in symbolic support, so even if it's not a very big number, like just a reduction of your registration, for example. Yep, stamp duty, um, be honest. Stamp duty, <laughs> and, and it's not, and, I mean the thing about it is on stamp well, duty, on for territory. example, on sales, EV owners or EV buyers have been paying more tax than conventional vehicles because of that initial capital cost is higher. So the stamp duty is proportional to the cost, so they've actually been taxed heavily. Some people say, oh, but you don't pay fuel tax. If you actually mm. look at it, most of the early EV buyers have paid more in stamp duty than um, regular car users will pay in fuel tax over about three or four years. So what is the registration cost, Hunter, here in the Northern Territory? Because it's zero yeah. CCs, I thought you were... Yeah. It, is, it is slightly cheaper, yep, it is.